All right, YouTube, it's me, David Harry, your favourite YouTuber and vlogger. Right, what I'm going to do is try and dive into this testing as soon as I can, okay, to do with this Fi Fine mic. But first, just a couple of quick things. To my buddies out there who kind of like have heard me rabbiting on about, oh yes, I've got this big box of microphones where there's at least 10 mics in it that I haven't reviewed and that it's been there for ages. I will get round to that box over the coming months and flash through those microphones that I've not done yet. However, I was on Amazon yesterday and I seen this microphone by Fifine, right? And it was 36 quid and I just thought, I've got to get that. You know what I mean? I wasn't expecting anything of it. However... I think that this is a fantastic £36 microphone. <laughs> it might even like be better for somebody else, actually, you know, like better value for money than what I see it to be. Um, anyways, just a few things about it before I crack on into it. So it comes in a nice little box here and stuff. It also comes with like this table mount. However, the problem is with that table mount, the microphone's going to be far too low. It's a dynamic microphone, so you can't really have them that low down. They're going to have to get close to you. But but nonetheless, it's a really good stand, which you can use for something else. Now, as far as the microphone itself is concerned, it is absolutely shocking, right? The whole body is metal, and it's a really heavy microphone. It's a very, very strong metal that it's made out of. The basket at the top is, I mean, obviously, it's, it's almost like water, as in it's incompressible. It's a really strong basket, so physically, the body and the basket are absolutely awesome right it's really weighty as well i mean if you, you know if you're going to get into a fight with someone and you needed a weapon i'd grab that first now the thing is although like this is all dead heavy and really well constructed it doesn't mean anything to do with like you know its ability to like reject like you know noises and stuff like that and um, for that i've not really tested it but it won't be that good at rejecting like you know bumps and stuff like that it is a cheap microphone now the only maybe let down here is the back of it with its like little clip thing that you screw onto like you know your stand and stuff like that or your boom and what have you that is plastic however it's a very very strong plastic so yeah it should be okay but overall my impressions are physically it is absolutely amazing for the money the weight of it the build of it and everything like that um, now i'm gonna let the cat out the bag i do well, i've already said it i do think it's a really good mic it, it's stupid for the money let's put it that way it may not suit everybody but i just think it's insane for the money anyway in the video what i'm going to do i start off by testing the mic on its own and then i put a preamp on it as well now just quickly the mic on its own um, i didn't realize it as i was doing the recording but the output on this is really really good so i was driving the input without like you know an inline preamplifier and um, but because i don't normally do that with dynamics i don't really understand the gauge that i'm using on my own camera however looking back at it this was actually driving the camera dead well so i've got to say that the output off this is really good i will actually do another video actually with this mic and maybe another one plugging a dynamic straight into like a camcorder this could be really good for that so i'll do that anyways i also do like a second half of the testing here where i use this cheap inline preamplifier. now this is by mineo which is a dm3 i don't know if this video's already gone up on my channel yet but i've already done a video with that and um, so the video basically me testing is in two halves with and without the inline preamplifier although i have to say on its own it's perfectly good enough to be used without an inline preamplifier and then also i kind of like pop about a little bit with this road ws2 as well a couple of different positions with and without the foam filter anyways that's the bottom line as to like what i've done here anyway within this thing now it's a bit underexposed because this was a prelim just for me but because i'm so happy with it i just thought i'm gonna have to put it out there anyways let me just dive into this and give you a really good idea of what this fifine k669d is all about oh yeah by the way it's obviously a dynamic uh, it's also got a cardioid pickup pattern on it although stuff like that i'm never going to test that type of stuff on a microphone that sits this close to your face anyway all right so here's the video okay so some initial testing here then for this fifine 669d right so what it is i've got the camera set at its zero point as far as attenuation is concerned and the gain is on five exactly so that's going to give me like precise like you know 
numbers to work with if this position proves to be okay and this amplification is fine for it okay so in this position here hopefully i'm not plosiving the microphone it is just off to the side there so ppp plosive plosive ppp now i'll just do a quick silence test right now because i will have gotten the tone immediately i would imagine as soon as i've lit heard it in this position but i think it's the noise that i would want to kind of hear next with this microphone and of course this is gained in post after what i'm doing here and what i'm doing here is well below the zero mark so no clip and anyway bit of silence Okay, so a slightly different position here, and hopefully this is something that I can work out again, looking at what a playback on the camera, and then remembering what's going on here. Now, I didn't talk straight into the mic before, but I'll do it on this go anyway. Uh, I don't know, it's probably not going to really matter too much, the angle of the microphone, if you're going straight into it anyway, because you're going to line up with the capsule doing that. But this is just more a bit shallower towards me, as far as the angle is concerned. I'm kind of trying to keep it slightly below me mouth line here as well uh, i tend to find that for me personally microphones pick up under a little bit below me as opposed to above and stuff um, i think maybe it's to do with picking up more of the resonant frequencies or what have you anyways that's me now going straight into the microphone and i will try this position again but with the microphone directly in front of me now hopefully i'm not popping it here so p p p plosive plosive i would imagine that that's definitely popping it so p p p plosive plosive and that's just me back here again so i'm going to do is change the angle again okay so this is one of those more of the mic traditionally right in front of you type of angles now i don't really like using microphones in this type of position usually because I tend to pop them and if this microphone is going to be subject to popping then this will definitely be popping in this position but I will kind of try and assist that in a second and um, wherever I put it oh there it is so this is a, a Rode WS2 uh, pop filter let me just put this on okay so that should be okay for the popping now if it was popping so PPP plosive plosive again me levels all fine and stuff like that now the microphone isn't dead center here and pointing straight up and the reason why is because the boom won't reach that far across in fact let me just try and reposition slightly a bit more so hopefully well actually no it's not so much the microphone won't go straight it's because of the cable cables pulling the microphone back a bit anyway what i'm going to do now is uh, just quickly try it out with this Mineo DM3 preamplifier. Um, this is just an inline preamp. Uh, I'm gonna try it with this one specifically because this is a cheap mic and this is one of the cheaper inline preamps as well. So if it's gonna work with an inline preamp, you know, I don't really wanna be recommending to people that they run out and buy a, like, you know, a fet head or a cloud lifter for such a cheap microphone. So I think this will probably be a good pairing for this mic. Okay, so I've now put the DM3 preamp on. Now what it is, when I use any type of inline gain unit for whatever microphone, I have to put the camera right down to minus 20 with its pad, um, and then obviously apply the gain after that. Well, the gain here is actually on three, so it's minus 20 with the pad, but the gain put, pulled right down to three. So that's suggesting to me that this has got a louder output or a much louder output than the SM7B, which wouldn't be a surprise. But nonetheless, yeah, it does seem to have a loud output. What it is, that would be something that I could usually gauge when the camera doesn't have its pad system in. However, I always have the pad systems in on the camera, so I'm not entirely sure what the 7B does with that, you know, when the pad isn't in and then when it's like gaining on its own with the preamp, because I obviously always use the, the, the fat head with the 7b so yeah this actually does feel or does seem to be 
looking at the levels to be quite a healthy output off the microphone or it has a quite a healthy output from the microphone anyway the thing is with this this type of position here i'm just gonna have to experiment a little bit over time regardless of the microphone in this position it's more to do with the aesthetic i think and um, you know just so you don't completely obscure your face and your mouth when you're doing this stuff and um, but hopefully you know somewhere around here on this type of angle is good for most of the mics that are used because it does feel okay to talk to camera with the mic like the, in this position now i don't know if it's been popping uh, i'll try plosive and whilst i'm not going straight into it so p p p plosive plosive and i'll go straight straight into it p p p plosive plosive p p p so i'll just talk a little bit going straight into it right now i will change the position again in a second however uh, because this is the first test and i didn't listen to the previous take that i've just done i'm going to try the foam filter in this position as well okay now does that obscure too much Again, stuff I'll have to experiment with to do with the uh, position and what have you, just to make sure that, you know, if I do start using a foam filter, it's not going to start obscuring the, you know, the frame and stuff. I think that's probably acceptable there, because the thing is, you do have to get these as close as you can anyway, if you're going to get the best out of them. And I'll try some, some alternatives to that in a second, and then, like, regain it in post. But once again, anyway, this is just good for me to hear, you know, what it's doing tonally to the you know to the sound with and without the foam filter because if it's not that much of an impact in the sound but it's actually you know helping with plosives of course you're going to use them anyway ppp plosive plosive going across it like the way that i am now i'll just go straight into it again there again even when i'm going straight into it i'm okay with the level of what it is i've got the gain set enough so that regardless of like you know how loud i might go i definitely don't hit zero anyway ppp plosive plosive ppp plosive plosive now i'll just change the position again of the microphone okay so what i've done here obviously with this take is to give myself more slack on the cable so i can actually get the mic coming up straight i think it's dear enough straight on screen although this is not necessarily for aesthetics this take um but i do want to know what it's going to be like when it does that anyway so ppp plosive plosive ppp now hopefully the position here is okay i wouldn't really want to get it any closer because once again there's the top of the mic there any closer and it does start obscuring the frame now I could have been plosive in that. Once again, I don't know anything. This is me very first take, so I don't even know if I was plosive in anything. Could I get away with that there? Somewhere in that position, just so that the um, you know the phone filter doesn't start covering me mouth and stuff. P P P plosive plosive P P P. Now let me just try another position here in front as well, just to see if it could work okay so the microphone is quite a considerable distance from me now although for other people this is probably what they think is a close mic position it absolutely isn't as far as a dynamic is concerned although you may need to have all this space here in front of you for whatever reason or some people just don't like having a microphone right on top of them now i've not done anything for the level here on the input so all i've done is applied extra gain for, uh, you know on the output here as well just to bring it up in post and stuff yet yeah, so at this distance here i'm not entirely sure if it might be picking up too much of the room because although it's pointing at me you know once you start gaining stuff up when there's more distance between you and the mic it inevitably will be picking out more of the room because more of that room is coming in with the signal like with your voice you know the further away the microphone gets so yeah again another thing that i do need to test for here although hopefully if this is useful um it won't be popping at this point anyway so ppp plosive plosive i'm even looking straight down at it now to do the plosive and ppp plosive plosive now just in case it was plosive and let me throw this on Okay, so with the phone filter on at this distance, this microphone just cannot be plosive. And hopefully it wasn't plosive and like when it was a bit closer and stuff. But nonetheless, PPP, 
Plosive, plosive, PPP. Now, just actually, just one very last thing. Okay, so what I'm doing now is obviously a super close position. Now, you know, some people don't mind doing this on camera, but this is going to give me an idea of what it would be like if I'm doing like off camera VO. I think I'm still just about okay with me level here. I don't think it's going to clip. Um, but in this position, I still wouldn't go straight into the capsule anyway. Um, I mean, that's very slight angle actually when you're getting close to the capsule can make a slight tonal difference however I still would want to be going slightly across it at an angle just to help with plosives even though I've got the foam filter on because a lot of microphones regardless of how good the foam filter is if the microphone itself is going to be susceptible to plosives it's definitely going to do it the closer you get to it and if you're right on top of the mic and chewing it like I am right now you know even with a good foam filter on it's still my plosive so I do try to still go at a bit of an angle with these things uh, when they are close anyway now just in case I'm just going to take that off there. Again, I'm just still going slightly across the capsule, although there's definitely a lot more wind going towards the capsule right now. So PPP, plosive, plosive, PPP. I can't imagine that that is not plosiving. And that may also be plosive, and but PPP, plosive, plosive, PPP. I have got a less than a minute left worth of recording. Anyway, hopefully I've got enough out of this video here to give me a good idea of what to do, because I'll do two videos, one with and one without a preamp with it, as long as the mic sounds okay. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm actually quite amazed at the construction of the microphone. It feels solid, real good solid metal microphone it is, although the mic clip is a dense plastic so yeah that could be a weak point at some point if you're not careful uh, because once you lock it up you, if you if you forget to unlock it to try and move it you might apply too much pressure this is gonna go i'm getting off okay so that ended rather abruptly that's because i did my usual and i was running out of recording time on my sd card anyway hopefully this video is being useful to somebody out there and i do have to say that this is an amazingly impressive microphone does the sound compete with a load of other microphones? I don't know, yeah. I mean, off the top of me, head, it's definitely better than some of the cheap mics. Um, but, you know, these things for this kind of money, you can't really criticise them. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you're spending 36 quid or like $40 or something on a, on a microphone and it is utter garbage, then at that point you've got to say, yeah, that's, that's a bad investment, you know what I mean? But for the kind of money that this is and the type of sound you're getting out of it i mean it's just nuts you know it's one of those things go back like you know to when i first got into like you know like studio stuff and i mean i'm going back a long time like but in relative terms you could never buy a microphone for that type of money and you know and even if you could have done it would have been absolute garbage do you know what i mean um so yeah i'm massively impressed with this microphone i will do a couple of other things with it uh, maybe it'll pop up in another video with something else as a comparison I may even try it against the SM7B but I've already done that recently with something else and it just shows up the SM7B to be an absolute waste of money anyways I'm diving off yeah sorry I keep forgetting to do that thing don't I if you have liked the video if you found it helpful insightful or entertaining in any way please do give us a thumbs up and a sub to the channel would be absolutely brilliant I'm David Harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now.